If you take A-level biology and you haven't seen this apparatus and techniques practical video, then you need to watch this video. It is gonna be a game changer to your revision, your exam technique, and it could even improve your marks by a grade or more. Hi everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I'm Miss Estrick, and I've been teaching for over 14 years in schools and tutoring. And I'm here to help you to get to grips with those challenging concepts in biology, improve your study skills, and to help you to get the grades that you deserve. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through how to revise the required practicals. Because it's one thing being able to do the practicals, write up your lab work and get signed off for those, but you also get assessed in it in the exam. And revising from your lab book isn't actually the best way to do it. So keep watching and I'll tell you the best way to revise for these practicals. Now the apparatus and techniques table, if you've actually heard of it before, shout out in the comments because I would bet that at least 80% of you haven't heard of the apparatus and techniques table before. Unless you've, you know, watched a few of my Instagram videos on this before, but it's one of the best kept secrets. Except it's not meant to be a secret. It's out there, it's public knowledge, it's in your specification. But because it's not within the theory part, which is the bit that most people print off, and B of course too, she can't resist a practical video. It's really not that well known about. And for that reason, students aren't aware of how to revise what resources there are available for them. But that's where I'm gonna come in and help you today. So I'm gonna split this video into four key pieces of information to help you improve your practical exam question. Number one is gonna be showing you the practical and apparatus technique table. Number two is how that links to the required practicals. Number three is the bit called independent thinking on the specification. And number four, this is gonna be the bit that you all want to know. It is the guidelines for how to improve your exam technique in practical questions. So here it is the apparatus and techniques table. And you can find this in two places, the required practical handbook or the practical handbook, or in your specification under the practical section. So that is where to locate this or just screenshot it and you've got it here. Now this is the same for AS and A-level. And what I recommend to do is learn all of this information in the table and that is how you revise for the practicals. So let me give you some examples. What I'd suggest first of all is you could create a set of flashcards to address this table. So it says here, for example, the top one, you need to know the appropriate apparatus to record any of those measurements. So you could have on one side of your flashcard, how do you measure temperature? On the other side, thermometer. And then you do that for all of the others in the list. Or you could do it for some of the techniques. So for example, you could have a flashcard to say, when would you use chromatography? And then you'd have your answer on the other side. Or it could be, when would you use or why would you use a colorimeter? And again, give your answer on the other side. So have your techniques, which would be the using the colorimeter, photometer, aseptic technique, chromatography, electrophoresis. And again, just looking through all of those, you've got sampling techniques as well. And then on the other side of the card, you would say why you would use it. Now, for some of these, it does require a particular method. So, for example, the use of a light microscope, including the use of a graticule. So you could have on one of your cards, how do you use an eyepiece graticule? And then on the other side, you would have your stages, your bullet points of how you would use it. You could have, how would you randomly sample? And then you have all the bullet points for random sampling method on the other side or for a belt transect, or for mark release recapture. So that is how I'd suggest to use this. And if you're not as much of a fan of the flashcards, which I personally think are great because it tests your knowledge, you could do a mind map, summary map, of all the pieces of equipment you'd need to use, looking through the list, and you'd have to research it as well to work out which piece of equipment it is. Um, and then all the techniques you could have summarized on a mind map as well. Now that's how you use this list, but, you don't have to learn exact methods. So I said earlier on that just learning the stuff you've got written in your lab books isn't actually the best way to revise because the method that you did in your practical for your um, required practical isn't necessarily gonna be the method that you have in the exam. So don't just learn the methods unless there is an exception to that, unless it is a sampling method using the microscopes and aseptic techniques um, and chromatography because those are actually listed as techniques that you need to learn. So for those you can learn methods, 
But for required practical one, for example, there's no point learning the enzyme practical method that you used because there's no set method linked to this and there's no set techniques. It's all to do with looking at this column in the table. And this is actually found also in the practical handbook um, and in your specification, this table. And it tells you for all 12 required practicals, what are the apparatus and techniques that you could be tested on in the exam? So it already gives you a heads up for these required practicals. These are the types of questions you're going to get. So if we have a look at um, the ones that are coming up in exams 2022 are required practical one, two, three, six, and nine. So let's have a look at number six. We can see apparatus and techniques C and I are what you'll be assessed on. So if you then look back at this table, so apparatus C is the using laboratory glassware, um, a variety of experimental techniques, including serial dilutions. So for exams 2022, learn a method for how you would um, do a serial dilution and learn how you'd calculate this. And the other one is I, use of micro use of microbiological aseptic techniques to grow agar plates and broth. So you need to learn what we mean by aseptic techniques, learn some examples, um, and those would be the two key things to really focus on for that required practical. So that's how you use those two tables together. And the final table they give you is independent thinking and analysis. And this is information for teachers and students. And it tells you, first of all, that at least 15% of the marks on your A-level will be assessing your practical skills. So it's quite a big chunk. And it then gives you an idea of what types of questions you can expect. So it could be problem solving, and this is linking to a practical context. It could be commenting on experimental design. So you could be asked to suggest improvements to the method. You could be asked to suggest control variables or a control experiment. You could be asked to design a table, draw a graph. Um, that has come up before quite a few times. They give you a blank bit of graph paper and you have to draw the graph. Evaluate the results and draw conclusions. That is guaranteed coming up on your A-level. Every single year you get asked um, evaluate the data, evaluate the method, or evaluate the conclusion. So you know you're going to be asked to do that. We call that critical analysis of data. I've got a video on that, which I'll link up here. 15 marks at least will be on that type of question for paper three. Identifying variables that could be controlled, we mentioned. Plotting graphs, we mentioned as well, linking to this idea up here processing and analyzing data, so the math side of it, uncertainties and looking at margins of error. And then the last bit here, know and understand how to use a wide range of experimental and practical instruments and techniques that links to the first table we looked at. So those three tables give you quite a big insight into what type of questions are going to come up and what they are after. So what sorts of things they want you to talk about. So now we've gone through those three tables, have a go and practice. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on because I've made you something free that you can download to help you practice that. So here's the bit you've all been waiting for, my guidelines for how to answer the practical question. There are three steps for how to answer them. There are three steps for how to answer them. Number one, once you've read through all of the information, you need to identify which topic, so which bit of the spec this question is linking to. And that often is quite obvious, but you might need to be really specific. So if it's enzymes, for example, is it to do with enzyme inhibitors? Is it to do with temperature and how that affects? The enzyme is it to do a pH. So step one, identify the topic. Step two is recall all the key words that link to that topic, but also that link to the required practical and the apparatus and technique. So if we carry on with this idea of enzymes, you might be thinking of enzyme substrate complex, denaturing, hydrogen bonds, and so on. So you've got all of your theory key terms, but if we're thinking about rates of reaction, then there's going to be apparatus that you would need to measure the time, so stopwatches. If it's one to do with temperature, you would need a piece of apparatus to measure the temperature, and so on. So that's your step two, consider all of the key 
terms to do with the theory and think about all of the key apparatus or techniques that you have now learnt from the previous tables. The final step is essential. You need to highlight or underline the information in the question that they've given you which hints to whether the method might be valid or not. So if you get a question that says evaluate the method or the conclusion, you don't just use the data if they've told you to use all the information, you have to use all the information that they've written as well. So the sorts of things I'd be highlighting is, have they told you how many people they've tested something on or how many repeats they've taken? Have they told you the control variables? Is there a control experiment? Have they got a placebo if it's a drug trial and so on? So those are the sorts of things to highlight and pick out in the method. If they've told you they've done a statistic, definitely highlight that as well. Then once you've thought of all of those key three steps, have a look at the questions and you'll be able to draw on all of those things that you've highlighted, annotated and thought about to write a much, much better answer. Because even though it's a practical question, you have to have those key words, key marking points within them as well. Now, if you want to give this a go and a bit of practice, I've created a free practical workbook. So if you head over to missestrick.co.uk and go to the resources tab, you will find the practical exams question. There is 124 marks worth of questions there with the mark scheme, with the apparatus and technique table, with the required practical table as well. So it's a must. Go download it, practice everything I've talked about today and see your marks improve. I hope you found this video helpful today and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos.